Ngozi Okonjo Awila, welcome to the program. Thank you, Sarah. The World Trade Organization can seem remote. Even to young people, it can seem like the enemy. Can you tell us what it does and why it's relevant to our lives? So I just want to say something. It shouldn't be remote. It's about trade, and everybody knows what trade is about. The organization is really about people. Let me just say a word about its purpose. Its purpose is to help enhance people's living standards, to help create employment, and to support sustainable development. So I say it's all about people and getting goods and services to people. Nothing remote about that. You're also no. the first African head of the World Trade Organization. Have you defined your role as working against global inequality? Well, let me say this. It's exciting to be the first African head and the first woman, as uh, many say. But I always say that the best head is the one that can run the organization the best. And hope, hopefully I'm, I'm that. And um, I have... One of the most important things I'd like the organization to achieve is to use trade for inclusion, mm -hmm. to be more inclusive, because there are countries and people who have benefited from trade, but there are also those who have been left behind. So the issue is, how do we use trade as an instrument to bring them in? You were also at the Global Climate Change Conference in Egypt. How significant is it now that the developed world has finally agreed to create a fund to help developing countries deal with the damage created by climate change? I think it's hugely import important that now there is a fund for loss and damage. It's not yet clear how that fund will be filled, uh, how the funds will, will come. Um, um, but we at least have a fund open. Now, where the resources will come from to fill it, that is still to be decided. But getting approval for a loss and damage fund is hugely important. There are countries that can be wiped out with just one, one cyclone, one, one hurricane, and helping them to rebuild will be crucially important. But is growth in global trade, is it actually compatible with limiting emissions? Absolutely. I say that trade is the missing piece in our climate change fight. Um, look, you can't really fight climate change. You know, if you want to mitigate carbon emissions, you need the technologies to do that. And it's true trade that you get them from one place to the, the other, the place where the technologies are made to places where they are needed. Trade is an adaptation tool. If you have a climate event, unless you can get your hands on the goods and services you need to recover, you can't recover, and that's through trade. So trade and trade policy are crucial. Now, of course, Australia is one of the world's biggest proponents of free trade. Do you support Australia continuing to export coal to whichever country will buy it? Australia has benefited hugely from trade. We know that coal is one of those fossil fuels that leads to very high carbon emissions. So I think it would be good if Australia could move on its green hydrogen path that it is developing. And that's going to be so important uh, as an industry, which will create new jobs. It will be so important to help in the world. So I think that's where rightly attention should go. Can you envisage a time when the world imposes export restrictions on carbon emitting products? I'm sure that... Um, that time is here. There are countries that are saying, uh, you know, that they will put a tax or a price on carbon emitting products. And um, I'm sure that as time goes on, as countries try to achieve their path to net zero, net zero emissions by 2050, you will see more of that. So that time is already here, I think. We saw uh, Xi Jinping playing a prominent role at the G20 when you were there. Do you have a message for China about its continued embargo of Australian goods? What, what we would like to say uh, is that we hope that China and Australia 
uh, will begin a dialogue. And we saw that happen. We saw that the Australian Prime Minister Albanese had a meeting with President Xi Jinping, and that meeting was constructive, and I think that's a good opening. But at the same time, I think you observed at the G20 that one of the consequences that we've seen in the recovery from COVID is a return to some protectionism and people deciding to bring their manufacturing back to their country. How concerned are you about this creeping return of protectionism? Well, let's put it this way. Of course, uh, at the WTO, we don't like protectionism. But let me say this. We've looked at the vulnerability of supply chains that we saw as a result of the pandemic and the war in Ukraine. It certainly became clear that manufacturing of certain products is too concentrated. You have 10 countries that export 80 percent of the world's vaccines, for example. So we know that to manage risks, there needs to be some diversification. Now, some people say reshoring, let's bring everything home and produce it. The others say French shoring, let's look for our friends. Someone who is a friend today, how do you know whether they'll be a friend tomorrow? Or someone trusted today, are you sure you can trust them tomorrow? It's better to manage risks, allow business to manage its risk by diversifying globally and using that as an instrument to bring countries that were at the margin and people who are at the margins of trade in to be more inclusive. We call it re-globalization at the WTO. Finally, you wrote a book with Julia Gillard about leadership for women. How do you decide when to confront stereotypes and when to ignore them and let them fly past? Well, um, I think when it is clear a stereotype is systemic, you have to challenge it. Because if you don't, that's a big missed opportunity. If it is something that happens just uh, of the moment and you can challenge it, always challenge a stereotype. You know, I'm a very f straightforward person, so I'm sure each time I confront, I've tried to challenge it. But especially when it's systemic, you've got to say, look, this is not right. That's not the way things work. Um, and men play a big role. Men need to give women a chance, need to give women a voice, and sometimes men need to get out of the way so that women can have a chance. On that note, Ngozi Okonjo-Iwila, thank you very much indeed for joining the programme. Thank you.